Mr. Barber. Thank you, Acting President. Uh, Acting President, Victorians are crying out for a government with a vision and a plan for this state. Uh, and they're not getting it in the form of this budget, nor are they hearing it from the Labor or Liberal parties. Now, this is not the first time that a government has faced economic, financial and budget problems, and it won't be the last. But that's no excuse to let go of a vision for this state. And it's like anything in life, uh, you, if you want to achieve something, you have to have a plan and you have to work consistently towards it. And uh, nobody in Victoria right now can tell us what this government's plan is, nor have they heard anything uh, from the opposition either. And the uh, lack of confidence in the future of Victoria is written all over these budget papers. It's almost as if a receiver has been appointed to wind up Victoria and many essential functions that must be provided for in every budget are being hacked into, like hacking into your own uh, basic organs and uh, with no thought to what that will mean in the medium and long term. And so I don't know what it is that uh, MPs are going to say as they go back to their electorates tonight. Um, they've put three times as much into new prisons as they have into new school projects. They've clawed back $2.50 uh, a month from the compensation paid to people for their uh, winter energy bills. Um, they've cut into their own kids' future and the skills base of the economy. There is not one increase to tram, train or bus services for the city or for V-Line. And we're told that some new V-Line trains are coming sometime in the future. Uh, but apparently the budget went down tr a treat at a fundraising event uh, organised by the Liberal Party where the top end of Collins Street meets the bottom end of Spring Street. What we know is that the government is constantly telling people that we need to live within our means. Well, absolutely every citizen of Victoria already understands that and the poorer their means, the better they understand it. It's not something on which the ordinary citizen wants to be lectured by the government. People want to know what is your plan to take us through this difficult time and on into the future. And in fact, it's a financial crisis like this, a global economic crisis, that really tests out uh, a government's political priorities. And so in this budget, you'll see them clawing in an extra $90 million from poker machine taxes from some of the most vulnerable people in Victoria. Uh, I found a lot of difficulty finding a public transport project in the budget papers. Uh, there was the rework of the car park down at Warrigal and another 150 million being tipped into Mikey by this government on top of the blowouts of the previous government. So it's more from pokies, more from public transport tickets and more from your water bills. And on spending, it's roads, prisons and subsidising coal-fired pollution. The government's priorities here are absolutely clear. All the key cycling programs that have been running along for years have received no funding in this budget. Uh, and that includes the Vic Roads programs and, of course, the Metropolitan Trail Network along our rivers and through our parks. All we're seeing in this budget is the leftovers of previous projects being delivered and then nothing for the future. Uh, my colleague Colin, Colin Hartland from the uh, Greens MLC from the Western Suburbs was surprised to see Ted Bailey on his first visit in Footscray the other day. Uh, Colleen, was taking the, Colleen was taking the train to work as per her norm, on, on, to Parliament as per normal and saw the Premier arrive 
uh, in his chauffeur-driven car to deliver armed guards for the railway station. And Miss Hartland uses that station every day. She says she doesn't believe it's a dangerous place. The danger we're seeing on the public transport system now is the overcrowding, accidents and trips and falls due to the lack of new services. And as I said, not one increase to tram, train or bus, city or country in this budget, despite public transport fares being lifted 8.6% on January 1, and now we hear another few percent uh, before 12 months is out. The money spent on those armed guards would be better spent putting staff on every station so that you see a friendly face who can also give you directions and can sell you a ticket, which would help reduce the levels of fare evasion which themselves are allowing millions to go out the door. On education, it's just incomprehensible that the government seems to be determined to destroy our TAFE system. This race to the bottom was set up by the previous Labor government, and now it is that TAFEs have to compete with every fly-by-night operator who sets up a tertiary course, and the Minister for Education ends up standing more like the Minister for Consumer Affairs, having to warn people about uh, what is a significant investment in their lives, applying for a uh, tertiary course, paying significant fees to get into it. And unfortunately, this competitive model, commenced by the previous government, um, which also restricted access to subsidised fees, makes it harder for people to retrain. And so the necessary mobility in our working lives or the adding of extra skills has become even more difficult just over the last few years, and certainly not just in this budget alone. And that's been a huge blow to the TAFE system, which many, many people have used uh, to get a new start in life. And to those people, it's uh, uh, something that they, they love. In country areas, of course, the regional TAFE is well known and respected, and many people uh, expect uh, that their future will be uh, to go to that TAFE when they leave school. Now it's, uh, it's all becoming a bit of a mess. And uh, quite sadly, uh, amongst those stories included the cuts to the Auslan, that is deaf sign language uh, course. So far the government has not been able to uh, assure us that that course is going to continue. It's the only one of its type that we've got here in Victoria and that makes it extraordinarily difficult, not just for people who want to learn to be sign language interpreters but also for deaf people themselves to access a whole range of opportunities. These are some of the um, very unfortunate stories coming out of the uh, government's budget but what we're yet to hear is a vision for the state. That vision must encompass a long-term investment in the things that we need uh, here in Victoria to uh, plan for our future. In education, we are currently the lowest spending state in Australia on education. Whether it's an economic strategy or just the right thing to do to encourage social equality, we must boost our education spending up to at least the national average. But if we want to compete with the world, then we need to start looking at the sort of investment that other countries make in education. In health, uh, we have a number of crises, but the most noticeable one is dental health, with waiting lists getting longer and longer. At the federal level, the Greens were able to negotiate half a billion dollars to go into a program to cut dental waiting lists. What we need to hear from this state government is that they won't use that as an excuse to cost shift through this budget, that they will cooperate with the federal government to develop a plan to help cut those lists, and that they might even see it as, as a great investment to put more money in to public dental, because 
uh, as anyone's had a, a long-term problem with their teeth would be able to tell you, tell you, it affects all parts of your life. But across the health sector, and we see very little investment in this, uh, in this budget, we have a whole range of preventable problems that if we address those at the beginning with some small but significant sums, we would avoid the later, the, the spiralling costs associated with chronic ill health at the acute end in the hospitals. And I'm talking about the so-called snap factors. That is smoking, nutrition, alcohol, and physical activity, all of which uh, need to be addressed if we're to create a healthy population, a happy population, and for that matter, an economically productive population. On the environment, we just see a big fat nothing from this government. Any program that was making a difference to reducing our greenhouse gas emissions has been cut and subsidies keep pouring in to the coal-fired generators in their last ditch effort to fight off the growing and bountiful renewable sector. Um, before this term of government is over, this government is going to have to explain what it has done for the environment. And that's not just addressing climate change, which is becoming a critical pressing need, and one which a significant proportion of Liberal Party voters actually list as a, as a key concern for them. But also with our natural environment here in Victoria, with the, one of the most uh, ecologically damaged states, we have critical ecosystems in decline, on the edge, if urgent action isn't taken, we'll see an increased number of species <coughs> extinctions. Uh, by the way, the government, if it wanted to, could address two of these environmental problems in one. If they ended wood chipping of native forests, then uh, they would reduce a huge amount of uh, carbon going into the atmosphere and at the same time secure those species and, their water, uh, and, and the water supplies that come out of our mountain forests. On taxation, you would not expect and you would not see any reform on this to state taxes. The Henry Review, which we worked very hard on and the, that the Greens continue to promote, talks about the different state taxes and the distorting effects they have on the economy. Uh, but no state premier is putting up their hand to drive that process and it would need to be a national process. Uh, there are a whole range of state taxes that uh, that are burdensome and have uh, negative economic effects. But the worst of all is the more than a billion dollars that the state government collects from poker machines. Uh, there should be a policy of limiting poker machines to one dollar bet per spin. It may have some impact on state revenues, but that would be money that is currently coming out of the pockets of some of the most vulnerable people in our society, people who've become hopelessly addicted to poker machines. And Transport and Energy Acting President, I suppose I could do hours on. Both our energy system and our transport system have been run down and neglected over decades by a succession of governments, Labor and Liberal. And I see no sign of any action being taken on either of those. Our electricity bills keep going up and up and up and up and that is being largely driven by the cost of running the distribution of electricity, poles and wires. Those are monopoly privatised companies who seem to get their way every time and they need to be controlled and, they need, and our bills need to be brought back under control. Uh, a government report uh, that's been uh, prepared but is hard to find even on a government website suggests that more than 400 million a year coming off our bills, flowing through this budget and uh, going to those monopolies would be avoidable if we set up renewable energy options, energy efficiency and made it easier for people to uh, feed back into the grid uh, but there's no law reform promised in that area and as a result, the cost of providing concessions to low-income electricity users is growing very fast in this budget. 
So there's both a general public benefit and an ordinary consumer benefit to changing this, uh, this monopolistic privatised system by which our electricity uh, is delivered. Ask the State Minister for Energy about it. He says, don't ask me. Uh, I'm negotiating some rules with the federal government. Well, he controls the Electricity Industry Act and he has a strong role to play here, something in opposition he said he would do. On transport, it's another one of those areas where there just is no long-term plan, no medium-term plan, and nothing but a grab bag of short-term priorities and very little by way of new services or new projects in this particular budget. And transport's fundamental. It doesn't matter if you're in an area on the outer edge of the city or at the ends of the lines in country areas, or if you're right in the CBD where you've got the opposite problem of traffic congestion and overcrowding, transport is fundamental. It's absolutely essential for you to access all the other opportunities, whether they be to visit a doctor, to get a job, uh, to uh, study and improve your uh, prospects. Without transport, and particularly public transport, as the most efficient way to move people around, uh, we have a big problem uh, socially, we have a big problem environmentally, and we have a big problem economically. All of these fundamental issues um, are the ones that the public wants to hear from the politicians on. So far only the Greens is putting, only the Greens are putting forward practical and affordable solutions in this area. We've brought legislation before this parliament to try and achieve some of them and we're being knocked back regularly. And uh, uh, we're not hearing a vision, an alternative vision, being put up by either Labor or Liberal. Uh, the next state election is going to come around sooner than you think, Acting President. And I can, uh, I can assure the government that right now the public is waiting to hear from them what their vision is. And on these important issues, the ones that we would expect any budget to cover, they are not hearing anything from the state government. They're despondent about that. They're not hearing anything by way of an alternative from the opposition. And so far, it is only the Greens putting forward practical and affordable solutions. Thank you very much. Senator Spring. 